uh, Sarah is uh, the subject of just a couple of verses here in Hebrews chapter 11, and we want to look at those briefly, and then go on and uh, discover what led up to this particular set of events, and this uh, uh, overview, this summation that we have in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 11 and 12. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive a seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one in him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. While there rose an occasion when God spoke to Abram. Now remember before Genesis chapter 17, Abraham was Abram before God changed his name. Sarah was Sarai before God changed her name. There was an occasion for God to speak to Abram, to identify himself to Abram, and to uh, call him to follow him and to obey him, and to leave Ur of the Chaldees and go to a place that he would not disclose uh, in the beginning until, probably, until Abraham uh, entered into the land. He, he acted in faith and followed after God. He knew that God was God. He believed uh, who God was and who he said he was. And so he followed after him. Yet, he didn't keep the terms of that call exactly, precisely, the way he should have. God called Abram and his wife Sarai to come out of the land of Ur of the Chaldees and to follow him, to leave his home, to leave his kindred, and to follow God. We see that Abram did pull his possessions together and his wife and leave Ur of the Chaldees. However, the problem arose with probably Abraham not wanting to break up the family unit, and um, somehow either he convinced Terah, or Terah just decided since he was the head of the family, the head of the clan, that they should all move together. All left Ur of the Chaldees together in a caravan and moved onward. Now you ask, what is the problem with that? Well, according to Joshua 24:23, Terah still worshipped other gods, the same gods as their ancestors on the other side of the flood. He was not a believer in Jehovah, in Yahweh. He was not following in faith because God called. He was just simply going along to preserve, probably, the family unit. And so he would have been the head of the household, leading his household onward, even though he had no idea where they were going either. But they made it as far as Haran, and there they tarried. Now, that was probably a very good thing. They stayed there for quite some period of time. They accumulated more wealth. They would have been very wealthy people in Ur of the Chaldees. It, it wasn't that they were leaving a poor place for a better place. It was quite the opposite. They were leaving the epitome of society and wealth and venturing out into a wilderness, into an area they did not know, did not understand, and really had absolutely no idea where they were going. Well, they made it to Haran. And they remained in Haran until the death of Terah in Genesis 11.32. And that is actually where the story begins where God can bless Abram. Abram, uh, we are not shown, had any kind of a communication with God. During that whole time that they traveled, 
when they left from Ur of the Chaldees and went to Haran, and the whole time they were in Haran, until after Terah's death, and then they picked up the pieces, they uh, collected all of their accumulated wealth, and by that time Abram would have been the head of the family clan, and so I don't think it's a problem at that point that he took Lot with him and Sarah, Sarai. There, there really isn't a whole lot more said about that. There, there are some clashes between Lot's herdsmen and Abram's herdsmen until they do eventually separate after they enter into the land of Canaan. All of those extraneous problems had to be out of the way before God could follow through with the promise that he had given to Abraham to bless him through his posterity, through his son Isaac, who has not yet been born, through Isaac's son Jacob, who hasn't been born, and so on. Okay. And as I said, Abraham was promised a progeny, a descendancy, through his wife, Sarai. There was a problem in Genesis 11.30 is disclosed to us that Sarai was barren. She had no child. There's no possibility of her conceiving and bearing a child, and yet it is through Sarah's womb, or Sarai's womb, that God intends to bless Abraham and intends to set up a posterity, a people of faith, who would lead the example of faith for all of us who follow after. Now, they left Haran to go into Canaan in chapter 12 and verse 4, after Terah's death. At this time, Abraham was 75 years of age. We know that Sarai is 10 years his junior. So she is 65 years of age. And we find that in Hebrews 12, verses 10 to 20. And let's turn over to Hebrews 12. Excuse me, Genesis 12. Let's turn over to Genesis 12. And we find that in Genesis 12, verses 4 and 5. So Abram departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. And everything was fine. They sojourned in the land. They were looking about in the land. They were laying out in their minds what the land possessed, what it held, uh, what the good features were and the bad features would be, where would be the best places to encamp and where would be the worst places, where would be the best places then later on to establish a home and dwell, and what would be maybe not so great. And then everything is moving along just fine until we get to verse 10. In verse 10, there is a second of the tests. Now, you remember the first test was that Abram was to get himself up and to get out of Ur of the Chaldees and go to a place that God would disclose to him, leaving behind his kindred and leaving home with uh, his possessions and seeking out what God would have for him in the way of a nation, in the way of a homeland for his posterity. Look at Genesis uh, 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee, 
and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Because he was a man of faith, and God gave him the opportunity to act in faith, and he did, but he didn't fulfill the conditions that God had laid before him. And so, even though the blessing was promised, and the blessing was sure, and God had intended to bless him and to make him a blessing to all nations of the earth, all kindreds and people, that blessing was deferred until the conditions changed that Abram had artificially uh, created and put in the way to block the plan that God had for him. He didn't cancel out God's blessing or God's plan for him, but he did defer the results. He could not go into the land of promise until the only people who were with him were the people that uh, uh, would respond in faith, and Terah worshipped other gods. Now, all of that said, we get down to where Abram has already gone into the land of Canaan and is sojourning. But in verse 10, and there was a famine in the land. Now, God did not specifically tell him what to do in the case of adversity. And so we might make an argument from silence and say since God didn't tell him exactly what to do, it was up to him then to uh, figure out what would be the best answer for his circumstances that he found himself in, to take care of the people whose lives he was responsible for, and to find a, a place where there was plenty of uh, provisions, where there were where there would be a lot of food and he would be able to take care of those people, they could get provisions and then go on back home. But God didn't tell him to go down into Egypt. He took that upon himself. He did not approach God and say, there is a famine in the land, oh God, what do I do? What should I do? Do you plan to take care of me in the land or should I go down into Egypt and to seek out provisions. Now, Abram took it upon himself to fix his own direction and to fix his own problem, and he went down into Egypt in order to, um, uh, to seek provisions to save his family, and I guess he figured that if he were dead, he couldn't take care of his family, and it was a life-threatening problem to enter into Egypt especially with Sarai, his wife, who was indeed a, a very lovely woman, and we'll get there. And it says in verse 11, And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarai, his wife, Behold now, behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. That's an understatement. Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they shall kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. Again, an understatement. And the princess also of Pharaoh saw her. Uh-oh. And commended her before the Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. The plot thickens. And he, entered, uh, and he entreated Abraham well for her sake. And he had sheep, and oxen, and he asses, and men servants, and maid servants, and she asses, and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, 
What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why saidest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. Now therefore behold thy wife, take her, and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. He didn't lose anything. He gained a few things in the process, according to chapter 13 of the riches of uh, Egypt, of Pharaoh. But he put Pharaoh in a very precarious position. 